Thank you for joining me. Well, it's Monday morning where I am, and what better way to kick off a week of map making than with some hillshade razzle dazzle? I'm going to show you how to make a hillshade in a stipply, bumpy, pebbly technique. Pebble hillshade, we'll call it. Here is a digital elevation model of Bryce Canyon National Park, a beautiful place. It's actually provided by Tom Patterson as one of his set of archetypal digital elevation models to help researchers, terrain enthusiasts, hillshade weirdos, to give them a pack of uh, really dynamic landscapes that can be consistently used and shared with each other. So we have a, like a common ground from which to share our weird hill shading techniques with each other. Thank you, Tom. Speaking of weird hill shading te techniques, let's do a not weird hill shading technique. So I'll just do the standard um, single light source traditional hill shade on this without changing any any of the inputs. Just default hill shade. Seriously beautiful stuff, by the way. Default yellow shade is great. Ah, oh, seriously. I, I've hiked down this with my father uh, year, many years ago and it was great. Hoodoos, these amazing, bizarre geologic stacks, little weird towers look like statues almost. Check it out if you haven't. So here is our hill shade. By default, of course, we've got white painting in the light facing side of slopes and then transitioning to fully black to represent the fully shaded algorithmically determined to be fully shaded. And this is using stretch because it's just got a single band, but let's see what's available to us. We've got discrete, we've got classify, unique values, all kind of interesting, but what in the world is vector field? Vector field. Now vector field is a technique used by people who want to show flows and currents, typically meteorological applications, people showing wind speed and wind direction and ocean currents and that sort of thing. You can get a sense for what it's meant to be used for by looking at the symbol type drop list. We'll just keep it a single simple arrow. And we have an option here. It can it can shrink down to 0% of its symbol size all the way up to 100% of its symbol size. Now the symbol spacing just means how resolved you want this array of symbols to become. And the smaller the symbol spacing, the finer the grid that's rendered for you. Pretty interesting. I'll set it to 10. So now they're 10 pixels apart from each other. And the neat thing about this is when I zoom in, it re-renders it at my view extents 10 pixel range. So it, it's happy to re-render and redraw, which is wonderful. I don't have to recalculate this every time I've changed my perspective. Now, what am I seeing? I'm seeing large symbols in, let me get rid of this underlying, I'm seeing large symbols in areas of high value, which is the sunlit side. And I'm seeing very small simple symbols for areas that are in shade, because those are the lower values. This was not intended to be used for hill shade. When we symbolize hill shade, it's typically the reverse, you know? So darker areas would be high value. Um, so in this case, we've got almost an inverted hill shade technique. Let's play with this. So it, my background right now by default is transparent. But if I make it, uh, if I made it a dark background, this starts to make sense. These areas of shade are more apparent because I'm seeing through to the dark underlying areas. But let's do a basic mid-tone and we will, let's just make this white and hit apply. Okay, now I've got um, not necessarily hill shade, but hill shine. So this is a layer um, representing hill shine for Bryce Canyon National Park. Let's play with it a little bit more and get rid of the fact that this is an arrow. We'll go to the gallery and choose a simple circle symbol. It's a lot of S's in a row for me. Okay, and then we'll make this white course representing light, the hill, the sunlit slopes. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is pretty interesting. I wanna do the same thing, but for dark areas. How do I do this? Well, I'm just gonna hold my control key and drag this layer to make a copy of it. Tommy Fuvel showed me how to do this, actually. Uh, check out his video in the description below. There's a link to it in the description below. So here's a, let's do a, a black version, which is sort of the reverse of this one. So I'll hide my light side. This is the light side. Call this the dark side. You underestimate the power of the dark side. And I'll make this black. Now, 
the high value areas, the large pixel values are going to look big, um, which is the sunless side, but it looks like shadow. How do we, how do we reverse the values of these things? Well, I'll tell you, there's no super easy way to do this because we're misusing this tool. It wasn't designed for us to just say, you know, make this negative and positive, switch, switch this around. That's, you know, that's what we get for misusing tools. That's okay. How can we use other tools to get around that little roadblock? Now, by the way, you could play with some of these and find options that might work for you. I'll show you what I've found is to be the best situation. I ran a raster function to get this hill shade. If I right click and say, edit the function chain, it shows me the little um, logic chain that I use to make this raster function, my hill shade, my input, my hill shade. What I wanna do is invert my elevation model and then run a hill shade. So I'll get the opposite. I'll get uh, kind of an inverted hill shade, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. So how do I do this? I'll open up the raster functions and I'll choose math. Let's see, there's gotta be something good around here. Simple band arithmetic. And I wanna nudge that into this formula before I get to the hill shade. So instead of going from the DEM to the hill shade first, I'll swing it over to the band math. And the method I'll use is going to be user defined. And I'll say B1, which is band one, times negative one. I'm just gonna invert this. And then I'll do a hill shade on it. Let me just check that everything's cool. Bloop, bloop. Yes, checks out. Now when I run this, isn't that interesting? I've got an inverted hill shade. If I took a negative of this, it would look as you expected it to look. But right now it's doing a hill shade on a reverse of the digital elevation model. Okay, cool. So now we can do our hacky vector field symbology. Set these to the same value of 10 point symbol spacing, 0% all the way to 100%. And we'll change our default blue arrow. Now I've got areas of shade rendering as big symbols, which is what we want. Now, if I turn the light on at the same time, I've got light and shade kind of rendering on top of each other concurrently, which is fun. Isn't that kind of neat? And it's happy to re-render as I zoom in and out. I love that. Let me zoom way in. See? Okay, well, we can do another kind of weird thing to this. Let's keep going. It doesn't have to be a solid color fill for this. So for our dark areas, Let's go into the symbology properties of this black circle. And instead of just a, a, a fill type that's solid, let's choose one that is a linear gradient. You probably know where I'm going with this one. And I'll make it fully black to fully transparent black. Hit OK. So black to transparent black. And I'll give it a little rotation angle, let's say 30 degrees. I'll zoom in, give you a sense of what we're working with. Okay, so it's fully opaque black to fully transparent black. I'll hit apply. And that gives it a nice sense of dimensionality. It's just kind of fun. We'll do the same exact thing with our light symbol, but we'll do it in reverse. I'll choose linear gradient, and then this will be white to white, but I'll choose the other side to be fully transparent. Let's let's switch these around. I'm not sure what'll look cooler. So I'll make this fully opaque, 0% transparent. I'll make this one fully transparent. The good thing with this is we aren't working with paints and stuff. It's pixels. Pixels are cheap and they're easy and they're fast. Let's make this 30% and hit apply. Interesting. Isn't that fun? So the result here is a sort of stipply texture of hill shade. I'm not totally satisfied with the way that white gradient is going. I'm going to reverse this. So I'll make this fully white to fully transparent white on the bottom right side. Okay, let's see how this looks. Yeah, it looks bumpier. Looks like a lizard skin for crying out loud. Okay, so this is one way that you can hack the vector field symbology type to give you newsprinty. Well, if it looked like this, it might look kind of newsprinty. Um, to give you cool, stippled, textured, pebbly hill shade 
for whatever reason you need. Okay, bonus points. Let's use blend modes to get cool colorized versions of this. We don't need to be working fully in grayscale to do this kind of hack. I'll open up my properties and give it something great like Delft Blue. Delft, I'd love to see Delft. Okay, and for the light, I'll choose instead of normal, which is no blend mode really, I'll choose overlay. It'll mathematically boost the brightness of the underlying color instead of just add white on top of it. And I'll do the same thing for dark too. It'll mathematically darken the underlying color. Isn't that kind of beautiful? Especially where they start interacting with each other and overlapping. You get some variability in the hue. Very fun. Now, while we're here, let's just get a little bit bananas and make these really fine in resolution. Instead of a 10 point spacing, let's make it a five point spacing, essentially quadrupling our resolution. Isn't this interesting? So there you have it. Have fun. Use, misuse vector field symbology, make weird pebbly hill shades, and own that process. Have fun, make cool maps. Are they gone? Is it only the randomly adventurous people who've made it this far into the video? Okay, then let's just riff. Let's have some fun. <laughs>